Award Delt. Named for the noble Roman general of antiquity, Cincinnati is called the Queen City of the Midwest. Located on the banks of the Ohio River, it's where the first pro baseball team began playing in 1869, the Red Stockings. Obviously, games are in the air around here, because right next door to the Queen City is the town of Norwood, home to the King of Cards, the United States Playing Card Company. No matter what the game, poker, solitaire, hearts, fish, whatever, the people in this factory deal nothing but winning hands by turning out 20 million cards a day. For those of you who count them, that's about 400,000 decks, or a single deck four miles high. So who dealt the company's first hand? CEO Greg Simcoe takes us into the founder's room. Who's this august-looking gentleman here? This is James Armstrong, the actual founder of the U.S. Playing Card Company. He started in 1867. These are the other two partners that originally started the firm, Robert Morgan and John Robinson. John looks like he just got up. John looks like he's had a couple of martinis, I think. <laughs> so we call him Mr. Beefeater. Circuses were big business in the mid-19th century, so the founders printed circus posters. But in 1881, riverboat gambling was even bigger, which meant there was a big market for playing cards. Soon, though, another fad inspired a printer's grandfather, who'd been daydreaming out the shop window. He saw all these folks riding bicycles, and he said, you know, we got to figure out a way to get in on this fad. So they named their number one product Bicycle. The origins of playing cards are murky. Some credit first millennium China, others 13th century India or Egypt. But the ancestors of today's deck probably came from France over 500 years ago. Now, the origin of the common suits that we see today mm -hmm. are from France in the 1400s. The hearts represented the church. The clubs represented husbandry. The diamonds represented the sword. And spades represented the knights themselves. The standard deck is only the foundation of the business. Over the years, the company has also created specialty lines for some of its best customers, like American GIs. That was a spotter deck from World War II. They put these out for all the GIs in the field. So you don't shoot down the good guys. That's right. And for the war in Iraq, there was the most wanted deck. GIs play cards. That's a way for them to become familiar. With their faces. While they're playing cards. Of course, there's Notorious, and then there's Notorious. Al Capone eats your heart out. My mother always said I was a card. Coming up on Made in America, the really big deal. Later, we pick a few locks and lock a few picks. Stay tuned to learn the ups and downs of ups and downs. So here we are in Cincinnati, queen of the Midwest, and home to more queens of hearts than anywhere else. Welcome back to the U.S. Playing Card Factory. Making a great deck of cards is a real balancing act. The cards have to be strong, yet flexible, smooth, but not slippery. It's all about touch. The cards we're seeing here are for home use. Those intended for casinos are made under security precautions worthy of the U.S. Mint. Regardless of the use, the process begins with paper, which in this case is a blending derived from hardwoods, softwoods, and linen. The director of manufacturing, Jim Owen, oversees the high-stakes creation of the decks that will soon show up on a gaming table near you. Now, the operators, what they're doing, they're making sure that we really control things like moisture very carefully, because we want to make sure that the, the playing card is very consistent and that when you uh, take it into a humid environment or dry environment, it doesn't warp on you. John Glass has been splicing and laminating here for 38 years. It's like a big roll of toilet paper, isn't it? A big roll, my man. It's what Paul Bunyan used. What's the machine doing? This roll and this roll are running together up in the middle there, are getting pasted together. It comes out all the end. Each card is composed of two layers that are sealed together, then laminated. Now, if you're looking for the exact formula, well, they're keeping that much up their sleeves. Tim Chandler is manager of paper converting. This is the adhesive layer that we put in the paper on a warm side. That's kind of our, our little secret ingredient. It's what makes the card durable, playable. It's what helps to the shuffleability of the card. Well, don't forget about putting the cards in bicycle spokes, too. Works quite well for that. Sounds just like a motorcycle. Yes, it does. After the paper dries, it's off to meet the crusher. 
a machine that presses everything to a predetermined thickness. Once the paper has been pasted, laminated, dried, cured, crushed, and calipered, next stop is the printing press. This is our printing operation. This is the output end of the printing press. You can see on this we have actually 54 cards and two instruction cards. And when you flip it over, what we have here is we have a four-color face. Now the printed sheets are cut into strips, and the strips are punched into cards. That's where finishing inspectors like Pat Thomas come in. How do you know it's a bad deck? Because it doesn't have an ad card on top. It's missing some cards. Pat fans a sample deck from each run expecting for ink spots, nicks, and tears. If she finds something, she immediately pushes a button to shut down the run. How does it feel to have all this power? Kind of like the captain of the ship, aren't you? Yeah! Just shut down the whole yes. operation. Yeah. The decks that make it through are snap tested, slide tested, and rub tested for integrity, and packaged and boxed. Finally, they're ready to deal. As in, deal them out where it counts. For instance, a friendly game of poker with the guys, or even not so friendly. Hey, is this a ringer? Uh-oh, it's Mike Sexton, host of the World Poker Tour. Get that spade! Hey! Oh, wow! Here we go. Oh, now we're talking. Are the sunglasses required? A lot of poker players like to wear sunglasses when they play poker. You know, I happen to be able to look the guy. I like to look him in the eye. Yeah. I'm not crazy about sunglasses at a table. He raised 13. I still got it. No! Yeah! 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 He still here. beats me. Is there no this mercy? This is the way it's done right here. One yeah. of the great things about poker is that the best hand doesn't win all the pots. Poker is the art of bluffing. The better you bluff, the more you win. Oh, he's going for it. He's moving all in. I got a call. I'm all in, too. I'm going to gamble with him, too. We're all in. OK, let's see what we got. Cincinnati. It's a cruel town. Later on Made in America,